some setting. Is the sound back or you still can't hear me? Now good. Oh, then I have to uh, talk with Chessable. Now good. Yeah, that's strange. I guess I didn't get, I changed the size of the room and I lost uh, video and audio. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, how, how much? Yeah, ah, we'll, we'll figure this out. Yeah, all right, uh, Can King Sam. Please go ahead, uh, Sam, you're the fastest one. Please go ahead, you can have the move here. What should Black play? Knight takes d2. We concluded last time that it's funny, but from these four pieces, then the bishop on d2 appears to be the most passive one. But it's actually a very good trade because if we don't do it, then they are probably going to trade on e4. Like if we play some random move like, I don't know, knight a6 or something, they could probably take instead. And they are favored by this. They can later on bring their bishop to this diagonal. And we said that this can be worrying in the long run for, for black. And white's rooks are like well placed for, for this action also. While if we take and then we bring out the pieces like playing c6, for example, um, it's strange for white but it's they are actually missing this bishop a little it gave them some stability and if they play like e4 uh in the very worst case we could maybe just take it and they have some tactical liabilities right something like that yeah active exchanges that's what we're talking about here exactly thanks uh Sartak. that's the topic of this class so yeah strange uh, i must admit that when i saw this game i was surprised by this decision but then i noticed that uh, Grandmaster uh, Petrosian, he was completely right in, uh, or was it Sargsian maybe? Was completely right in doing this. Aha, uh -huh. Sargsian, I think this was. Uh, or Mar Martirosian. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting confused of all the strong Armenian uh, Grandmasters. Uh, this was Petrosian versus Sargsian. Yeah, Sargsian was playing with the black pieces. He's the one who played here, knight takes d2. So, yeah, interesting case. No interesting case. Sometimes you shouldn't look too much at what leaves the board, you should look at what stays. Somehow this trade made it more difficult for White to plan their actions here. So uh, let's continue. Let's do some more things about uh, active exchanges. I wanted to start with something I came across just the other day. Maybe some of you were following the tournament played in Romania. The uh, What was the name of it? Superbet uh, tournament. Yeah, the super bet, exactly. So I came across this game. Maybe you would say, well, that was a boring game. But uh, I think I extracted something interesting from it. So uh, anyone, could you tell me Black's uh, uh, smartest way of playing? Could you say maybe smartest way of playing? It's some kind of exchange. Uh, how do you say? The, the Queen's Gambit accepted. Yeah, Queen's Gambit accepted. You can see that it's the exchange variation, so to speak. White played d takes e5 also and traded on d8. This was a plan uh, popularized by Kramnik. Kramnik is the one who uh, showed the benefits of this of this plan that White can actually they have some little something to play for in the in the middle game and so on. One plan is to go like a3 b4, put the knight here and so on. Uh, Queenside domination, right? It's funny that uh, Firusa had put the bishop on. F1, because I, I remember from Kramnik's game, he would very often reroute the bishop is here and he would reroute it to F3. That's what Kramnik would play. So, all right, enough talking from me. Everybody is saying here bishop B4. So, I wanted to ask you a question then. If we look at Black's pawns, we can see that they have at least four or even five pawns on nice squares. Are you convinced that we should give away that bishop? I would say that's a strange plan. It, it goes against my lo logical, uh, yeah understanding of this game. If I play like that, I'll play a3 with white. If you want to trade off, I think I will happily accept that. No, I will take it with a knight maybe. I'll try to put my knight there. Uh, maybe later on I can I can give him a massage on this diagonal and so on. Um, yeah, I can see some people are actually telling me the right answer now. Anyway, I don't believe in this so much for, for, for black. And like I'm saying, maybe this is a good plan here for white actually to try to fianchetto because now there is no bishop on on that uh, square, right? With the black pieces. So I don't think we should. Yeah, Princess Megan, you also found it. Yeah, that's Hollow Blade, little chess player. Yeah, we have a lot of, yeah, copy and paste, says Kang King Sam. Yeah, so that's what Vacher played. And I mean, it's, it's one thing if you and me were here looking at this position, checking different alternatives and blah, blah, blah. But he actually played it. He played here Bishop D7. I thought that was extremely clever because he understood that probably White is about to play Knight c4 i should have told you of course this was the last move in the game so it's it's not exactly surprising if the knight goes to 
uh, goes to c4. I looked at some other moves also, right? You could play something like knight c6, just normal development. But maybe white could play something like, let's say, uh, let's say I start with knight c3. I have some idea of knight e4. Maybe you can play b5. Uh, I looked at something like this. And I, I was not exactly sure about what what to think about it. Uh, maybe you could play like a4 and soften up the, the queen side a little. If b4, maybe knight e4. Yeah, what do you think? Is, is this anything for, for white or maybe it's, it's nothing for white? These positions are always very tricky, I think. But I would think of something along these lines, no? Bring my rook to c1 or maybe it's the other rook, actually. Try to put the knight on c5. Uh, yeah, all right. So that's what I thought about this. And, and also you can see in all these positions that the bishop is kind of gloomy on c8. No, it's not a very active piece. So like, uh, yeah, like you're saying here, bishop d7, that's what he played in the game, knight d7. And uh, if white plays knight c3, we could play like uh, Princess Megan was saying, now we could play bishop c6 and we can reroute the knight to, to d7. And uh, we have firm control of this square. You, you see what, what I mean, I hope, right? I see there is some other conversation in the chat. We're speaking about how much, how many rating points you have lost and so on. But maybe you should focus a little more on the board, right? So if you compare these two variations, no, we're saying knight c6, we're saying maybe white could go like knight c3 and try to play knight e4. But if we play this move, a chess move, bishop d7, we could meet knight c3 by bishop c6, like Princess Megan said. And in this case, we keep control of that square. While in the game, uh, Firuza played instead uh, a3. And by now, just to see if people are understanding this, I will quiz you for the next uh, moves here. Let's see if we can get this right. Uh, but the last move is uh, optional. No, the last move is optional. So it uh, doesn't matter if you don't make the last move here. Okay, so some people just stick to the plan that we talked about. Aha, yeah, you can probably play like that. If you play bishop c6, I think I would go knight c4. Uh, yeah, Firusa explained that plan. Aha, knight c6 on move two. Maybe. Okay, so random. you're the only winner here. But okay, we're talking strategy. Okay, Princess Megan also. We're talking strategy, so there is more than one solution, obviously. Uh, you don't have to play exactly like, uh, like, like I was hoping that you would, no? B5 is also possible. Yeah, exactly. But maybe then the bishop on C4, Owen, Ryan, and Chess Vedant, maybe that bishop, you don't need to touch it. No, you can attack it with your pieces instead. So, all right. Sui and Princess Megan are the ones who found this uh, curious variation about trades. Don't forget today's topic, active exchanges. Which pieces would we like to trade at a specific moment of the game? So, uh, yeah, please go ahead, Sui. You were the fastest one. Show us what you have noticed here in this... Uh, yeah, boring position, some people would say, but I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's what Bacher played in the game. After bishop takes, pawn takes, he didn't have any big troubles in this game. He later on brought up the knight. And I think there was some plan with rook a4. We, we can look at that also, of course. But interesting was if white played knight c4, because white would love to keep the knight on c4. Some people were saying here knight c6, for example. But I would play knight e2 in this case, and I would try to later on play a4 and try to put my knight on c4. But we can fight against that plan, right, uh, Sui? Yeah, we can play that. And here we can simply bring out our pieces. So some people were saying here, yeah, what about b5 and move 3? I don't think it's a mistake. No, I don't think it's a mistake. Maybe I could go, I would go only here, right? So I have this in the pocket. And I know in these positions, a4 will always be an option. But probably this is fine also. You can play 97 and yeah, nothing's really going on. So I think it's okay also. Yeah, you can play 96 also uh, at this point. But uh, 97 is smarter, I think, because it, it gives you a chance to go to c5 also. Very tricky, very tricky positions. But if you play on move 2 instead, if you play something else like 97 here, I think I would play 92 and I would try to play a4 and try to get my queenside gripped. No, slight, slight grip, you could say. But uh, I think this move is clever. No, bishop takes c4 and then bring out the knight. So rook c8 is also another possibility. Yeah, so this is what... I was looking at and here maybe if, if they go back with the bishop somewhere you can play like bishop d6 and maybe bring the knight to c5 that's maybe why we could uh await with kicking the knight because yeah you can see for yourself knight c3 maybe i get knight c5 in and, and i'm heading for b3 yeah we will look at some uh, other examples now if you say this is extremely boring to look at all right i i get the point i get the point maybe this is not so interesting but uh, anyway vacher is one of the world's best players and i thought it was interesting to have a look at 
his way of treating this position. If you play bishop c6 here, yeah, I don't think that's the right choice. I would play knight c4, and you can see that also, for example, if you play something like that, I could consider something like knight a5. Maybe this is slightly unpleasant for, for black, right? Uh, so I, I wouldn't play that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, strat strategy, right? So many possibilities, and there is no uh, exact answer, and so on. We can just see what what the grandmaster played in the game. Bishop e5. Firusa decided that it was better to take on b5. I could also think that perhaps Firusa said this bishop it's not so useful anymore, so I better take. And the game went like that. Knight b3. And actually here, Vacher used the same topic again. Many of us would perhaps blindly. Move the bishop. Yeah, so he is moving the pieces here. Exactly. He played knight e7. Don't you think that's kind of interesting? He's saying, come on, you can take my knight. My bishop, sorry. I don't care. Uh, my bishop was not that useful anyway. My knights are smarter. There are some weaknesses that I can work on and so on. If you spend the tempo on moving the bishop somewhere, yeah, I don't know. Maybe white can play like knight c3 and attack this pawn, right? But if you speed up the game a little, you play knight e7, it's a different story. Uh, Firuza played knight c3 anyway. And here, Vacher pushed b4. You can see that if uh, knight takes, I guess he was about to take here, right? This must have been his idea. And, and yeah, we cannot take anymore because the rook is hanging. So smart move by Vacher. There was knight b5. And yeah, black could have played here in different ways. I guess it was not a crime to take on a3. But he played this very, very uh, interesting move, rook a4. And then he brought the rook to, to a8 and black was okay. So. Yeah, something about the subtleties in the world top 10, you could say. Uh, most of us, myself included, we would think about developing the knight here or maybe play like b5 and bishop b7 or things like that. But no, but here established that we should actually bring the bishop to b5 to counter the plan of knight c4. Yeah, thought that was an interesting, uh, interesting idea. So let's uh, continue, guys. Let's see something else. Uh, let's go back a little in time. Let's see an example which I have used many times, but I think here I haven't used it so many times. So hopefully you have not seen this before. Uh, it's a game between uh, British Grandmaster Jones versus Adiban, strong Indian Grandmaster. So I'll quiz you on this one. Let me know if you can find the best way for white to go here. Uh, remember today's topic. Try to establish which are your opponent's most important pieces and what can we do uh, with respect to that. So, all right, you get one minute for this. Let's see if you can walk into uh, Jones' uh, footsteps here. All right, which is our opponent's most valuable minor piece, you might ask yourself. Aha. Uh, careful, Chess Vedant, Happy Pawn and Connor. I think your intention is excellent, but you're dropping something there, right? Or am I, I should I drink more coffee maybe? I'm thinking I could take on E4. Uh, but uh, having said that, you're definitely on the right track. Okay, interesting suggestion by Sarsak, uh, Tactical Magician 206, Tiger Sake, and a lot of other students want to trade off that bishop. All right, what does that mean? Interesting, I'll have to think about this. Uh, can I take on, yeah, could I take on E4? You would then have to take on e7, right? And I would take on f3, maybe? Okay, skilled sever. You're the only one, the only student capable of walking in the footsteps of Gawain Jones. Aha. But uh, other students were very close also. Mickey Mouse and Ryan and Inari, you were definitely close, but you played in a little more, what can I say, humble way. L008 and chess art, you move the you change the move order which should be okay also yeah you can consider yourself winners but definitely skilled several and so random you're the only ones who played exactly like in the game let's bring up skilled several here uh show us what we should play here knight takes f6 first so as to uh, avoid attention on e4 right we will come back to that okay we'll come back to that one nice thing about this move is also that you have some like flick flexibility thinking you can see Regarding how they will take back, we can do different things. All right, they took with the bishop, and now the key move of this game. Exactly. So that's what he played. This is the move, guys, that I really wanted to understand. Typically, you would think that, all right, we're doing something on the on the king side here. This kind of French Rubinstein structure, we're usually doing some 
aggressive stuff against Black's king, but this is the, quite the opposite. We trade and we trade off that bishop. That's the most important piece. Funnily enough, you could say Black's queen, it's very useful for uh, covering some squares on the king side, right? To frustrate the white attack. Some of you noticed that in this position, for example, we don't have things like knight c5 because they will just trade off queens, right? On the other hand, the queen is a little missed on this side of the board. So that's ex that explains why Jones suddenly focused on the queen side instead. Now the queen would love to fly to a8 or something like that, but that's evidently not legal in chess, right? And you can also see that bishop takes it. Yeah, you're, you're losing the exchange. And I mean, I could even take with the queen if I like, and I have a fantastic endgame with the, with the bishop pair and so on. So yeah, what to do here? Uh, Adiban, he took on a6. And yeah, please go ahead, uh, skilled. Uh -huh. And here he played knight c5 and skilled first traded the rooks. Yeah, honestly, I'm not completely sure what's the big difference, but we can talk about that. Yeah, so that's how the game went. And uh, yeah, Adiban never got back the... He never got back the, the, the pawn. White uh, White went on to get to win this game. Um, yeah. So if you played, uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, skilled. Great work. So if you take like this, I guess it's basically the same thing. I can't see a big difference. Is that ninety three? Is that maybe? Yeah, I don't know. If there is something, it should be ninety three, right? Maybe that's what he didn't like. Uh, he was saying that uh, I better take first so that. Yeah, you see what I mean, right? If you take first and then they play ninety three. Maybe then we can go rook d1, and, and if they take... Yeah, you can imagine yourself, guys. You're very good with tactics and so on. You can see there is some kind of back rank motive, right? But if you uh, immediately take on a7, there is maybe not a back rank for, for white, really, because there are two rooks on the d8, right? So trading rooks makes more sense as l 0 8 That's what I think also, and that's what Jones apparently thought also. That's exactly how the game went. All right, we should look at some other options here. Uh, so some people are saying bishop a6 at once. But that seems like a giving away material, right? I'm still a little confused here. Should I take like this or should I take like that? Or uh, what's what's going on here, actually? Um, well, anyone who's very good with tactics, could I take like that, maybe? Or 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 are you getting back? You're getting it back somehow with some rook takes d7. It's, no, you can't do that, right? Or wow, yeah, I don't know. But you're not better in this position, even if this works. Even if this works, I would take. And uh, you're not better in this in this uh, endgame, I think. It's about equal here in this endgame. Yeah, what would I play with black? Maybe knight c5 and try to play for b5, knight a4 or something like that. I don't think white has any advantage here. I mean, I, I understand the point of the queen set pawn majority and so on, but black is very solid and I can also start, uh, yeah, advancing my pawns, right? So, yeah, I don't think so. New if knight e5 instead of rook d7, knight e5 instead of rook d7, knight e5, but knight e5. I'm up material, right? I, I regard myself as ahead in material here. I'll take and I'll put my bishop on d5. Yeah, correct me if I'm missing some cheap tactic or something. I would say black is technically winning in this position. No? Yeah, bishop a6 is asking for complication. Yeah, good point uh, by L. Uh, read this comment. That's a good comment. I tell my students the same thing. Uh, complications are bad unless you're worse. When you're worse, go for complications, sp spice up the game and so on. If you're better... Keep things simple, please. That's, yeah, golden rule, I would say, in, in chess in general. So, yeah, if you've spotted this nice idea of bishop a6, why don't we include a trade first? And then we do it, right? Then we do it without so much, uh, yeah, complications and so on. More to calculate also. Don't forget that. You spend like 10, 15 minutes on calculating some obscure variations, which will perhaps never occur on the board. And that time you might need it later. So it's not, it's not bad to be practical, right? You could take with a knight also, of course. You could take with a knight. I'm not sure what would happen, but I would guess maybe he can just play the same thing, right? Uh, knight f6 is just simple, practical, and better. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're talking about knight a6 on move 2. Oh, sorry. Did, did I uh, understand something wrong? Oh, sorry, sorry. You're saying, but that's what we played, right? We should play 6 on move 2. Or what am I missing this time? I don't follow. That's exactly what happened in the game, right? We're looking at the game continuation right now. So, yeah, I'm a little confused, but uh, anyway, I don't think that it's a big deal, no? Uh, in both cases, I think we would play bishop a6, and we're happy here. Somehow, when the queen gets to the queen side, it's difficult for black to uh, keep control of their queen side, no? So, yeah, that's what he did in the game. I, I would say it's, it's an interesting example, because you would always think that you should play on this side, but actually, in this case, partly due to the black queen on g4, it's actually better to play on the opposite side.
playing bishop a6 here. All right, let's uh, take something else. I'll pick up something, bring up something much simpler, okay? Something very, very simple uh, with the Vatier's example, fresh in mind. This one I can only give you, I think, like uh, one minute for this for this example because it's so simple. So, all right, you get only 30 seconds just to see how good you are with strategy, like uh, fast strategy. How did uh, Volkov continue here in this game against no one less than Alexei Shirov? Okay, we have a lot of winners here. JM Chess, Connor, Tactical Magician 206, Hollow Blade, Inari, Gordon, Mickey, Ryan, Kwoki, GM, Pikachu, Michael Deng, Princess Megan. You all got it right. Oh, some of you want to recycle. Zoe, Hermione, and others want to recycle uh, something that we looked, in, looked at in the past, right? But that costs a vital tempo, no? Playing A6. That costs a tempo. I think I would play queen d3 there. Yeah, we will talk about that, all right? We'll talk. What's wrong with bishop e5? Very good question, L. We will talk about that also. We will talk about everything here. But first, let us listen to JM Chess, who was the fastest thinker here. Please go ahead, JM Chess, what to play with black. Of course, this check, we're not after the pawn, by the way. We're after something completely different. We're after the bishop on d3 right this is a very good bishop not only you would say it's a good bishop for attacking purposes but it's also a good bishop in the end game and so on it's like like a typical good bishop in the french so not surprisingly that's exactly how the grandmaster continued it was difficult for white to prove an advantage here uh, if we look very quickly at what happened in the game they played bishop takes queen takes uh, shadow tried to reroute the knight to uh, to d4, I think, was what happened in the game. And Volkov continued with... Oh, 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 I misclicked here. Sorry, guys. That was a variation. He played here queen... Yeah, he played knight h6 and the game got... The game got very interesting. Yeah, the game got, got very interesting. Black won in the end, but yeah, a complete uh, mess here. But it was interesting to play after knight e2. It was interesting to play this move, queen b6. Retreat the queen. So you, you protect the pawn in advance. And uh, anyone, could you tell me why is knight e4... A bad idea now? Of course. Yeah, I don't have to ask you twice. Knight takes e5, and as you can see, if pawn takes, we can take on uh, f1 instead. So, yeah, that's uh, what you could play. So, white would probably play something else here. Who knows? Maybe like queen d2 or something. And maybe now we could play like in the game, right? Bring the knight over here or something. Uh, black should be okay in this in this position. So. Uh, yeah, such a pawn structure is not bad itself. We have a fast pawn or so. What black is basically after here is getting rid of the bad bishop. This one is wor worse than Vacher's bishop, of course. This is like a French bishop. It's not really useful anymore. So safe to say this is the best way to go here. All right. So L, you wanted to ask what about bishop b5? Yeah, I can uh, help you to understand this because that was what I thought myself. Um, question. Could anyone tell me if rook f2 is a good idea for white here? No, it's not a good idea, because black has knight takes e5. Exactly. But if you play in the other way, if you play in the other way, you start with bishop e5. Uh, I would take on b5, and here I would actually play rook f2. The point is that I uh, avoid any back rank mates, right? You take, you take here, and I play something like, uh, yeah, what would I play here? Knight h5, maybe. Knight h5 to bring in queen g4. So you can say a few things which are good for white, having played rook f2. One... Uh, if the king is on h1, there are back rank mates. Two, the rook is protecting the pawn on b2. I think it, it were the computers who noticed this in the first place. That Very often when humans would, by instinct, by reflex, they would just move away the king, computers said, I don't have any problem with self-pinning, and they would play like that instead. Like in the open Sicilian, you can think of some lines where you have f4 played and so on. So Yeah, that's a, a tiny difference, but I think it's enough to establish that Giving check first is smarter because we force them to play king h1. And then we go bishop e5. And as I was saying, uh, definitely there is some kind of back rank motive here. R not right now, but I mean, at some point it could happen. No? There could be some uh, tactics coming up. Like if you go knight h5, maybe later there will be some some uh, some tactics coming up. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can play like, can I take the pawn perhaps or, or something? Or maybe not. Yeah, tricky. No, knight h6 probably what I should play here. And try to put my rook on f5 or something yeah it's a tricky tricky game in any case but i'm just saying that this is something to to look after now if you're playing with the white pieces here so yeah what was the other question yeah a6 some people wanted to play a6 so i think if you play a6 my first instinct would be queen b3 protect my queen from 
uh, trades, but okay, you could play that anyway, right? That's what you're saying. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, maybe then. Maybe you could play that then, a6. Half a point if you played a6. It looks a little slower to me. I don't know if I can... Could I attack that pawn? Is that making any sense? Queen, queen h5? Would you then play what? g6? Can you do that? Or I can't take and play for an attack. I'm at a loss here. I'm at a loss. Is this really healthy for black? Or nothing happens here? Uh, don't follow. Knight h6. All right. Knight h6. Yeah, maybe you can do that. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I don't know what would be the consequence of this. Yeah, probably not so 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 promising for white. F5, you should always look at that move, right? But I don't know if it really works here. Maybe just a lot of uh, trades and so on. Uh, another idea might, might be to play queen c2, right? That's another angle for the queen. So we are hitting the pawn in another way. And I guess g6 bishop takes, it's dangerous, right? And if you play h6, uh, it's also a little weakening. So maybe here you could play the move a4 and you prevent bishop there and you would try to somehow bring bring back the queen to... Yeah, I don't know if I like h6 so much, no? The knight is not so happy about that move. So, All right, I think we are done with this exercise. We understood this perfectly. Queen b6, black is getting ready to play bishop b5. Trading there, bad bishop for whites, good bishop. That's a typical French uh, situation, right? Okay, let me see what else uh, could we check today. So I have another example. We're speaking about trading bishops today, which uh, made me think of another very interesting game, which was played in the King's Indian. Maybe some of you have seen this before. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it can be an interesting challenge for you. Uh, Black's best uh, continuation here. Hint, think about which white piece you would like to trade off. I'll give you only one minute for this, okay? So Black's best move and a concrete idea, okay? That's the mission here. Which is the enemy number one in this position, you should ask yourself. I mean, from Black's perspective, in this game between Terao and Mareko, which would you think is White's most important piece? Which is the piece that you would really like to trade off? That's my question to you guys. So many of you would like to trade off the knight on f3. All right. Um, I can believe that, but uh, maybe there is another. Oh, everyone wants to play that. Interesting. We don't have any differences here, right? Knight f4 also. Knight f4 trying to trade off my uh, my bishop, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay. So nobody managed to follow in the footsteps of uh, uh, Grandmaster Mareko. So let's check your your ideas here. Let's go in order of uh, of popularity. Knight e4 was the most popular move here. 94. So I looked at this also. My impression is that, yeah, white will take not to lose time and quickly bring the knight to d3. That seems like the golden square for this knight, right? The pin is a bit annoying, but uh, I have f3 in the very, very worst case. Uh, yeah, what would happen here? If you play bishop f5, I guess I could just play f3, right? How bad can this be? Yeah, those of you who are King's Indian experts, tell me, is this, is this like the best you can get with, with black or... Would you look for something better? Uh, now, I won't request just because everybody failed. We should talk about... Uh, nobody should make a mistake and, and, not, and not know why, why it was wrong. I prefer to talk about... Uh, we can come back. Maybe we can request. But let's first talk about this so that we are on the same page and you agree with me and so on. So I think if you go 94, I understand it's a very, very uh, visual move because you trade off the knight, the defending knight. You open up the f-file and the... I'm just saying that after 93, I I don't feel so bad with white in this in this position. Um, I have some kind of control here, like slowly play f3, maybe put my queen on f2. Somebody said something about queen h4. Was that here, queen h4? Maybe, yeah. I would still think about my move here, f3, uh, trying to play queen f2. Yeah, I'm definitely. That's by the way, that's the next uh, next week's uh, topic. We will talk about trading queens. All right, that will be our next and last uh, installment of this uh, series about active exchanges. So the Bishop f5 now says uh, tactical magician. All right, Bishop f5. I would love to play Queen f2. Let's see what tactical has prepared here for me. 
Queen takes f2. All right, I will take back with a knight. What did I miss this time? I think it's just getting better and better. But yeah, you will have to to show the opposite. But I'm getting uh, yeah, I think I'm getting a nice endgame here. No. Also, don't forget that the queen side somehow it's it's in White's uh, favor, perhaps at some point some weaknesses to work on. So yeah, I don't think that's so convincing. So if you don't mind, we should continue. Knight f4 was also discussed. Yeah, this time taking looks ugly because you then have like knight e4 also coming up. This time I think I will decline the trade. Yeah, this time I will not trade on on f4. I will just ignore your glorious knight. I will play queen f1 here. So, very active game for black, but how dangerous is it really? Uh, what do you think? G5. Oh, to play for an attack. Yeah, so, by the way, if you include this move now, I think I could take, and I was, well, I was going to, I will be honest with you. I was going to play like this and play my favorite move here again. But I know my bishop is a little shaky there. But, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe black is better here anyway. Yeah, it's possible. No, queen d2 may be annoying and so on. Yeah, anyway, let's let's see what you guys are saying. G5. Yeah, I'm about to lose a piece, so I have to give space to my knight. I will put my bishop here. Yeah, I don't want to obstruct the other pieces. G4 and knight 2 This reminds me of some of the bayonet attack positions where white uh, actually lets black do all these things, but suddenly there is like a moment where black's attack cannot continue. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but in the bayonet, the B4 King's Indian attack, Popularized by Kramnik also. I think Kramnik has a nice game where he puts a rook on a3. I don't know if you have seen seen that game, maybe. Uh, somehow the black attack came to a dead end, but maybe that's not the, the right uh, situation. Uh, this looks quite painful for white. h5, h4. Uh, all right. Uh, look at it from the bright side. My position can only get better here. Yeah, what would I play against h5? F3, can I play that or that's just asking for trouble if I play F3? Yeah, you have so many pieces on that side. I don't see the mate though. Yeah, I don't know. I, I will be very stubborn here and I will do my stuff. I, oh, sorry, that's a bit too far. Yeah, here I mean. Sorry, guys. Yeah, here. All right. All of those of you who believe in black here, yeah, show, you, show what you got, okay? Queen D8, the queen goes back. But that's kind of nice. Now the queen left the building. So can I go C5 maybe? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how this works for me though, but I mean it's an it's a natural move. Yeah, bishop e5. I was going to to give the change. That that should be lo logical for for anyone here. Uh, rook c8 makes more sense than queen d8. Yeah, I'm following the Sharjah tournament today. Very nice game, by the way, Mickey Mouse. Uh, today you should check the game. Adiban White, Christopher Yu with Black. That was an interesting game in the in the Karo Khan. But there were so many interesting games. That's not the only one. But yeah, th that's an interesting tournament. Rook C8, some people are saying. Rook C8, I would definitely consider C5 and try to open up the game. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe black is, uh, black is better here. Yeah, H4 and uh, some attack coming up. Yeah, maybe you're right. Or my move, can I take and try to somehow destroy your defenses? Anyone who understands this, let me know. Uh, you, Max Sodlu. Oh, yeah, I'll check that game. G3. Oh, interesting. G3. Yeah, so much people on the F file. I'm, I'm getting confused here. Uh, but you're giving away something here also. I don't know. What, what does that mean? Yeah, crazy position. No? Uh, if I take, I mean, that would be the first question, right? If I take, what happens? Did I get killed here after you took and I take with the queen, maybe? Or? I know if the knight was not there, you would take my queen with knight h3, right? But I won't let that happen. H3. Wow. Okay, if you play H3, I will definitely take on G3. Uh, I don't follow. Are you sure this is good for, for black? Take on G2. Why not G takes F2? H3 is bad. Yeah, the problem is you're telling me many things at the same time. It's difficult for me to, to keep on track here. G takes F2 was bad. Yeah, I was going to take with the queen. Yeah, that's, that's my point. I'm happy your knight is not around so that... I don't run into knight h3. Of course, if you move the knight now, I must be very careful. No, knight g3. Yeah, I understand. You want to play knight h3. But if I move my queen somewhere to some safe square like f3 or something, it's... it's, it's... Well, uh, poor players, uh, if you have to analyze this during the game. Uh, can't be easy. No, knight x6 and white wins a rook. 
White wins a rook or black wins a rook? I don't follow. Who, who wins a rook and when? Knight x6. Oh, black wins a rook like that, you're saying. Oh, I say tactical. You're right. My This guy is hanging. I could maybe, though, bring over my queen, but I guess then I get mated instead or something. Uh, I don't know tactical. This is way beyond my head. Uh, but yeah, you're probably right. I'm in trouble here. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. Yeah, I made some silly mistake here, probably. What was my last move? Yeah, I took on c7. Should I play something else here? Something is hanging here also. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like if I, if I take here and and I take on e5, is, is that is that ever gonna work or? Yeah, I don't know. Rook takes seven, knight is three, and queen f2. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's very difficult to analyze. Uh, I'm very happy that you're sending so many moves, but it's it's difficult to to analyze together in this way. Uh, so. Is there any conclusion about this? Queen, yeah, queen takes a five, probably. I agree. And, and you have the bishop defending the, the pawn. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what's going on here. Um, let me just think one last thing here. If I took if I took on g3 and I took on f5, right, or this is playing with fire, probably. Yeah, I just can't see the, the final part here. h2. Yeah, I was going to play king h1 then. I couldn't see how dangerous this was for for white, I mean. Uh, or maybe it's very dangerous, yeah. Queen h4, wow. Queen h4, that's a crazy move. Yeah, I don't think I understand this completely. Probably my, my lack of uh, coffee here, here, which is... Uh, yeah. Queen takes g3, yeah. But I think we're like playing blitz here, no? It's, it's not clear what's going on. Can I play knight e4, maybe? Did, did I get killed there? Yeah, like this, right? Knight h3, I take, you take, I take back. And uh, I have all the fun, right? Or maybe or maybe not, you have queen e3. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, we are lost in the myriad of chess tactics. Uh, maybe rook b7 is actually bad in the very first place. I'm starting to think that I should not play rook b7. Maybe this is too, too brave. Maybe I should go c5 straight away. Um, or maybe I should play knight e3. But why didn't I play knight e3? Yeah, my mistake. No, I should play that, of course. Bring in my knight and try to trade off your knight and so on. That's much better, probably. You can take like that. I will take like this. And look what's going on here. Look what's going on. Anyone who plays the king's in and with white knows that the knight is after the square, right? That's That makes sense, though. Queen g5, says Sartak. Queen g5 instead, though. Queen g5. All right. Here, I suppose, queen g5. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not so afraid of this. Uh, is there any like imminent tactic that I should be careful about? Or I have to admit I'm again interested in playing Rook B7. I, I, I guess that's not good for my health, but that's what I wanted to play here. Uh, but maybe there is some smarter way to play for, for White. I don't know. Rook B7 like, stands out. Uh, yeah, I would probably play Rook, Rook B7 here. Let me know what cheap tactic I missed here. Knight h3 doesn't seem to work, right? I play e4 and d4. Yeah, that's probably a different discussion. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, interesting game, interesting game. Anyway, what the grandmaster played was completely different. We talked about knight e4. We talked about knight f4. We can conclude that both those moves are very nice. Yeah, they're very interesting. For black. However, the grandmaster did something completely different. Okay, now time for the requis. Is that okay? We will do the requ requis again. Think about which is the minor piece that black would really like to trade off, okay? Which is the black, uh, sorry, the white minor piece that black would really like to trade off and how can that be achieved? Okay, you get uh, 50 seconds for this, okay? And don't forget to consider with which piece would you like to trade off that white piece? Which piece should be traded off for it? But if you if you come back and, and say knight f4 again, we just looked at that, right? Uh, well, anyway, yeah, whatever you like. But the point was that you would look at some other move uh, for, I mean, apart from knight d4 and knight f4. But yeah, okay, Gordon and JM Chess, you definitely, you're on the right page. Yeah, uh, he didn't give away the pawn, though. He, he, he defended the pawn first. But we have, safe to say, two winners here. Gordon and JM Chess. Ryan is the only winner. Okay, congratulations, Ryan. Uh, great work. Please uh, let us know. No requests on this one because Ryan found the answer. So please go ahead. 
Very subtle move, queen f7. You can only play such a move if you understand chess strategy, right? What the grandmaster has noticed is that it's this knight which should go and trade for white's bishop and hopefully do that before white is able to somehow like bring bring a knight to, to e4 to stabilize the, the situation. So queen f7 was played in the game. White tried rook b7. Now you know why I was insisting with this move because they played that in the game. Bishop c8 winning a tempo. The rook stayed in enemy territory and now... Black simply play knight f6. Now you can see we're about to take on e4, breaking the opponent's blockade. That's what this example is about. Wait, is not g4 winning a piece? Let's see, is not g4 winning a piece? I don't think the grandmaster blundered the piece here, but okay, we'll see the tactic. Uh, knight, I can see, I mean, tac cheap tactics, maybe not my strongest side, but I can definitely see this tactic. Uh, I don't know if that's enough as a argument, uh, tactical, or, or is there something better than that? I mean, if you don't take on uh, f5, then I guess the move g4, it's not ideal for, for white, right? It's, just, it's a weakening move, but maybe there is something better. I don't know. Maybe I can go the other way also, 94. The King's Indian, everything is possible, right? You would look at something like that, and I don't know if I could take on... This would be very pretty, no? If I could do something like that and take... And, take or maybe I'm getting carried away here exactly there is also bishop f5 that's right you could maybe play something like that I don't know those of you who play the king's indian would you approve this maybe bishop g4 at some point not here though yeah but bishop f5 looks like a strong move here or am I missing something I get back the the rook right queen f4 yeah queen f4 I will ignore your, your offer of trading queens also queen d2. Yeah, also queen d2, definitely. I think this is also powerful, uh, promising for black and so on. Yeah, that's how the King's Indian works, right? You give up something and you you get a strong attack in, in, in the best of cases. So, yeah, tactical. I think g4, it's, it's just too much for, 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 for white to handle. So, queen f7, it's... What about rook d8? Rook d8. Oh, you mean uh, at what point, uh, princess? Not here, right? Rook d8 doesn't seem... Uh, reasonable. Uh, so when? When? You will have to be a little more specific. And with so many messages in the chat, uh, I mean after queen takes f2. Oh, we're back in that line. We're back in tacticals variation. All right. Uh, we can look at that, of course. Knight e4, knight takes. Yeah, how did this happen? Pawn takes, rook takes. I can't say, when did this move ever c come up? I, I don't follow. When is that... Uh, Oh, rook e8. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a different story, of course. Rook e8. You have rook e8 here, you mean? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. This is, this looks interesting as well. Queen takes and... Uh, yeah. You have like a, a bunch of different threats here. So you're probably right, princess. Yeah, good point. Good point. This should also be promising. Very complicated. I don't think so. I think it's just difficult for, for, uh, for white in all the variations. So queen f7, very strong move. g4, impossible. In the game, there was rook b7, just as Ryan explained to us, bishop c8, rook a7, the key move of this game, knight f6, quickly trade off the, the blockading bishop, white played knight e3. It was possible. Okay, thanks, uh, Ryan, thanks. It was possible to do this, of course, take on d4, but in the game, the grandmaster found another interesting idea, which I wanted you guys to, to figure out. A hint. Something will happen with the white king in the very, very end. So let's see who is the sharpest uh, tactical mind here. Let's see if we can do this. You will have a very long quiz this time. Uh, you will have to find in total, uh, I think it's about eight moves or something. So you get, uh, but you're very fast thinker. So you get uh, one minute still for finding these eight moves. Is that okay? Okay. So take your time. Remember that there is some kind of tactic going on, something with the white king in the very end. Let's see if you can find it. Okay, if you take on e4, that's okay, that's okay. But it's not what he played. It's also leading to an advantage, so uh, no problem. Uh, no problem. Yeah, so 206, you're close. Yeah, that's probably also working. 206, Sui, tactical, GM, heuristic, Charles, Hua. Uh, oh, we have somebody who got very, very close. Let's see here. Daniel Best, congratulations. You got it up to move five. And, and that's a nice move that you played. 
HDI chess, you got up to move six. Okay, so HDI chess is the winner so far. Uh, obviously, you can find these things on the on the way, right? On the way, you can see like the first moves, and later on during the game, you can find the small details. So yeah, it's it's insane to 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 ask you for nine moves or seven moves or whatever it is. But I just thought it was yeah like a little challenge for you guys. So let's see here. HDI chess, I would declare no. JM chess is the winner here. JM chess got all the way. You just missed the mate, JM chess. So uh, yeah. Please go ahead, uh, JM, and uh, this time you will mate us, right? 94. O okay, we could take and then play 94. By the way, just for complete clarity, this was also possible. You can see that we have bishop f5 coming up. This is unpleasant for, for white also. So if you said that, consider yourself winners also. But let's see how the grandmaster handled this. So 94, knight takes. Yeah, please continue, the chess. I have only one way to... Protect it. Now you can see why I played f3 in the other lines, because I knew the game and I knew they did something like that. So now the pin is very annoying for white. You can see that this rook went on vacation. It would have been more healthy for white to have it on the first rank. But okay, we can't change that. Uh, please go ahead, uh, JM. Aha, bravo, tactical magician. Great thinking. Why didn't you send that to the uh, to the quiz? Aha, bishop takes e4. These kind of things happens when you have your pieces well placed for the attack and so on knight takes e4 and uh, yeah just make sure to mate them at the very end uh, jm chess that's right queen d2 and we're not queen f2 i mean we're not after the bishop we're after the king exactly okay the game didn't go all this way uh, after f bishop takes e4 white tried to give back some material to save their skin here but uh, yeah this was difficult anyway queen takes knight takes e4 rook e5 Black is the exchange up, but it's not really about material. It's about the pressure that they have on white. You can see rook e8 to come. Okay, material is also important, of course. We are the clean exchange up. So I thought this was a nice little example uh, about how we can trade off uh, an important enemy piece, in this case, the bishop on e4. Let's do something fun here. Let's uh, quiz everything. You, you get a chance to do the whole quiz, all right? You just have to be very disciplined. Uh, let's see if you can do this. I, I would definitely think that JM Chess has a fair chance of uh, getting this right. Also, tactical magicians would be among those who can get it right. Please notice you can take on e4 with both pieces, but in the game he took with a knight, okay? You could take with the bishop, but then Chessable will not allow you to uh, to score the full point here. So, okay, you will have to uh, find in total... Uh, 11 moves, I think. All right, 11 moves in one minute. Let's see who is up for this challenge. All right, take your time, guys. Don't send me the moves too soon. Don't send me the moves too soon. If you play knight f6 on move two, that's the pawn sacrifice, right? Then I can probably take on c7. That is a different story. He didn't let that happen in the game. He played bishop c8. Okay, JM, congratulations. First winner, JM chess. Second winner, Yugoslavian Berserker. Third, tactical magician. Fourth. Hollow Blade, 5th King, Kind King, 6th, Michael Deng, 7th, Pikachu, 8th, all right, 206, ninth place, Sui Random, Smart Goldfish, Charles Hua, wow, USCS really rocks, all of you can see this long and difficult variation, because you're very fast learners, I think Grandmaster Sandro Mareko would be very happy to see all of you finding his excellent positional solution here, also Charles Hua, Happy Pawn, uh, smart goldfish, you found this so nice. Okay, uh, and many people were close. I told you, I told you he took with a uh, with a knight first, right on e4. So if you took with the bishop, don't blame me. Don't say I didn't tell you about that. Please go ahead, uh, GM. You were the fastest here, so show us how does this variation go. The first very discreet move, queen f7. By the way, you could also play queen d8. If you played that, I think it's also perfectly fine. But I guess he wanted to keep the queen on the f file. I mean, I'm not saying that he saw the mate at this moment, but uh, it's pleasant to have the queen on the semi-open f file. All right, let's continue. Uh, well, it's the same position. Yeah, I, I didn't change anything. So rook b7, uh, here GM just protected the pawn on c7. If you played knight uh, f6 here, which is the right plan, I guess I can take on c7, and I guess this is not as com convincing as the other line, I suppose. Maybe if you play knight e4, I don't know, can I maybe take and play f3? I don't know, is, is this the same thing? 
Or is there some kind of uh, intermezzo with rook takes d7, maybe? Yeah, I'm not completely sure. If you do this, uh, is it maybe bad for me? Oh, maybe you can play like that then. Interesting. I didn't think about that. But that seems highly possible, no? To play in the same way. Rook takes, rook takes. Uh huh. Uh, so what might that mean? So maybe I shouldn't. Uh, I should probably just ignore this then. Yeah, I should move my queen somewhere, right? Queen d3 or queen f1. Yeah, let's put it on d3. I think that's the reason, no? And, and he didn't like the fact that the bishop is pinned, no? That's what I would think about this. All right, let's continue. Um, JM, okay, please go ahead. Bishop c8, now the rook is definitely out of place. And when their rook is uh, offside, we play in the center. Please go ahead, JM chess. Okay, Khan King Sam has pasted the whole variation. <laughs> okay, great work. Uh, wow, I can't really remember myself what happened here in this game. What what did they play in the game? They played bishop c3, no? What did they play? Knight e3. Okay, thanks, uh, JM. That's what they played, bringing the knight a little closer to the action. And yeah, let's uh, let's continue, JM. Exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. And at this point, uh, we bring in the reserves, right? This move is very important to challenge White's blockade. White tried to keep the balance. Both captures are fine, but I told you take with the knight, please. I can't really say there is a big difference, but um, we can only pick one. Chessable classroom, great place, but uh, there is only one uh, correct variation. Yeah, in the game they played rook takes c7 instead, trying to bail out, but it was difficult. And this is our main variation. Aha, very, very nice. Yeah, great work by JM Chess. So everybody, please notice... It's about challenging that bishop on e4. I remember there was a game by Petrosian where he did something very similar. I think he traded off the bishop on c4 or something. But uh, okay, that's a different uh, different story. I think we should look at one last uh, last example. Uh, we talked so much about trading uh, bishops today that I think we should uh, look at one more. Yeah, let's let's check another one. Let's let's show you something about end games. All right, let let me show you one end game example. Also, we are so much into middle games. Let me bring up something about end games that I came across the other day. Yeah, this one will be on the review next time. Yeah, definitely. So this one, I think it's simpler. We're back in Armenia again. Davtian with white pieces versus Hovhannisyan. At this point, you can see it's a double edged position. It's uh, black who has the bishop pair. But uh, white is a bit more active, I would say, in this position. And maybe you could also claim that white's pawn structure is a little more solid. But OK, we're in the end game. So after all, having gained some space with g4 and so on, it's not so bad for black. Anyway, at this point, white played the most tempting move. Like a tr trivia here, anyone, could you tell me which is white's most uh, uh, tempting move? Bishop d4 or bishop d4? Exactly. Yeah, knight x5, I don't think it works, no? If you play like that... Interesting. I think there is a cheap tactic here, right? Cheap tactic alert, bishop f4. This won't work. Where is tactical magician? This is for you. Yeah, exactly. Michael Deng, you're right. Bishop e4. I think that's not working for fully for white, right? I don't know. Could I take and play rook e3? But very speculative, right? In the very, very best case, you get back the piece. Oh, f3 you had. Sorry, sorry. My, my, I'm blind here. I didn't see that move. Oh, you're right. You can play f3 there. Yeah, what does this mean? So did, did it work? Bishop uh, knight takes e5? I can't take with the king, can I, no? Or is there some something happening to me? I don't see anything happening, though. I have king f5 next to him. Yeah, I can king Sam says king takes e5. Gordon says king takes e5 also. Yeah, sorry, I can't read all the messages. Aha, the king takes, it, it's better, of course. Yeah, after all, no queens around, so uh, we can take some uh, liberties here. Uh, this seems to be okay for black. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, whoever said this, Bishop uh, F4, that's what uh, they played in the game. So let's uh, flip the board. And this is one of your last quizzes for today, I think. Let's see who can find the whole sequence here. Black to play and get the substantial advantage. Let's see. Uh, please remember, when you step out of the skewer, there is an important uh, move uh, to be played there. All right, you get uh, one minute for this mission, right? Black to play and get a big advantage. Please notice what's the topic of today, right? What's the topic of today? Active exchanges, all right? Yeah, e4, you can get half a point if you play that. King f5, I guess I have knight x e5, no? 
or maybe not. Wow, so many tactics in this position. Yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about it, okay? We'll talk about it. Or do I have bishop takes if I maybe bishop? Yeah, bishop takes seems to be better, right? That's probably a safer choice. Yeah, king f5, bishop takes e5, rook e8. Wow. Knight e3 check, right? Um, I'm slow, but I can see that. Knight e3, and if you play king takes e5, I go knight takes e5, and you hang the rook in there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, king f5 and move 2, very interesting, but the grandmaster played something different. Uh, who got Yugoslavia Berserker, Happy Pawn, and Hermione, you're very, very close. Uh, Torices, uh, Charles Hua, and GM. Yeah, you are the winners here, for sure. So, please go ahead, uh, Charles, you were the fastest one to find this. Uh, he just didn't go for that pawn at the very end. You can uh, fix this by, by keeping the pawn in the very end, uh, Charles. So, please go ahead. How did Hovhannisian continue at this point? First move, very important. Yeah, this is actually, it's not so much about strategy, it's more about tactics, right? He noticed a very clever tactic here. Bishop takes e4, since after rook takes e4, he has a nice double attacking move, right? We can attack the bishop and the rook at the same time. So White saw this, I'm definite that Daftian saw this, but he must have misjudged it a little. He played rook c2. He knew that he would get back the, the, the rook, or the piece, sorry. However, it comes with a very high price. So at this point, after rook d1, it's important, everyone, where should that king go? Of course, active king in the endgame. No, not, no, nothing with retreating the king and blah, 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 save my pawns. No, no, we're playing with an active king. We're trying to attack those pawns. Rook takes d7, that's how the game went. And I think, yeah, exactly... Uh, Charles, I think you tried, you played this move at your first attempt, but I think I have chances of making a draw here, uh, trying to get at this pawn, but I have to take into account that you can come like this also. So, yeah, what would I play here with white? A funny endgame, right? Uh, yeah, what could possibly happen here? I don't know, honestly. I would even think like, I would play something like that and just try to simplify the game. Uh, or maybe there is something smarter than that, but yeah, I think white should be close to making making a draw here. I was thinking of something like this and just try to trade off the pieces and, and make a draw. But maybe maybe I, I give them chances to play. Yeah, probably my, 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 my move is very silly. Yeah, forget about my move. Anyone? Uh, could you tell me a good move for... For... Uh, why, no, in rook e7, I, they will play rook uh, there, right? Oh, maybe you can check them. You can check them, but they can maybe play like that. I don't know if anyone understands what I'm saying, but uh, like if you play that, I can go there and so on. F3. Oh, F3 maybe then. Yeah, but then maybe you want to play it on the previous move. Yeah, I don't know. Take, take, and bring in the rook somewhere. Rook. Yeah, should be a draw somehow, no? Should be a draw. I'm also tying your, you to this pawn. So, yeah, let's conclude that this is probably going to be a draw since we're also touching the other pawn. So, yeah, safe to say white should be able to, to save this game. So, better is what, uh, what Charles noticed at the second try. C5, exactly. Rook C7 was played in the game. Uh, you don't need to be Rubinstein to find the Black's next move here. You can see that we have this in the pocket. We could use it now, but we could also use it one move later. It's important. Yeah, if you play Rook D8, I go uh, King F1 for sure. I'll, I'll bring in the King. But uh, he he kept maximum flexibility. That's important. No, maybe just maybe the Rook would like to go to B8. Right? It's not clear that it it must go to D8. So. There is another move we could play, a multitude of options. I agree. Oh, rook d1, you have king f1, you have f3. Sorry, did, did you did you play something? Oh, you played h5. Oh, I see. No, that's not a good move. Uh, you helped me to simplify on the queen side. Of course, skilled server will play b4 and rook takes e5. So let me just see what somebody said here. Rook here and king f1 and f3. But I think this is very good for white in theory, no? I'm very happy to trade off the pawns. I bring my king a little closer. Not convincing, not convincing. This pawn can also be weakness. Yeah, this is not convincing. Uh, but in a way, you're right. It's good to have these pawns uh, far advanced and so on. In any endgame, gaining space is important. F3, like a one-move threat. Exactly, I agree. What about rook c8 instead of c5? What about rook c8? Yeah, what would I think about that? Yeah, the game gets crazy now because the pawns are so weak. No? The, all the pawns are weak in this position. Yeah, what... I don't have a clue here. Could I take and play rook there and try to take this pawn? Or, or your pawn is extremely fast, maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. 
Maybe I should play B4 then. Is that making sense, maybe, B4? Try to trade off things, pawns, maybe? Maybe, no? Maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> Chaotic endgame. But I think what he did was perfectly fine. So maybe we could focus on what he played in the game. C5, remember, gaining space with your pawns is very useful. So I don't know why the next move is so difficult. Uh, anyone? Exactly, Michael. A5, that's a good move because you stop B5, you gain space. Maybe this is the pawn that will win the game for you, who knows? And you preserve these two options, no? Based on, on what your opponent might do. You have two different options. So that's what he played in the game. And yeah, it's a long game. Uh, we don't have to look at the whole game. Rook B7, Black played Rook D8, and it was a long game, but Black later prevailed. You can see that they definitely have the initiative in this endgame. This is a weakness. We can work on it. Maybe even ideas like, you know, Rook, sorry, Rook D3, Rook B3 might make sense later on. But anyway, I just wanted you to see the picture here. We had this position. Uh, it was about equal, I think, in this position, but White should have played something else. I think the computer was saying that we should play this move. Uh, why did it say that, by the way? Because it wants to take on e5. Yeah, the computer likes to take material, right? That's what, that's what it was saying. But the uh, human fell for this move, bishop f4 instead, and then we had this nice little, uh, yeah, common tactic, or what would you say? Not common tactic, maybe, but so cheap tactic, yeah. Uh, anyway, so bishop f4 was not a good idea. You know the answer. We had this very nice um, transition into a rook endgame, which favored us. So careful and don't rule out moves like bishop takes. If you played e4, by the way, some people said that, I would play rook c2, and I think white is at least equal in this position. I would like to like uh, evolve on the, on the queen side later on with my pieces. So I think what he did was exactly the right way to play king d5, and later on, we saw that white had to play something like this to get back the piece. But then black's active king uh, proved to be a very important factor in this game. Yeah, something like that. And black is playing for a win. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Uh, next week, we will do the last lesson about active exchanges for this time. Thanks.